Hey y'all, welcome to my guide on Fox Ones and War Thunder. So, I've noticed a lot of players struggling to use Fox Ones, and with the addition of the MiG-23M in the last update, and the JA-37 in this update, now all but two nations have access to this type of missile. In this video, I want to go over the basics of how a Fox One works, the key binds you'll need to use them, an explanation of the UI, some basic tactics you can use, and finally, a gameplay demonstration. So, let's get started. Starting off, for those of you who don't know, FOX-1 is the NATO brevity code used when an aircraft is launching a semi-active radar homing missile, or SAR for short. A SAR works by having the launching aircraft illuminate the target with its radar, and then the missile will pick up the radar reflections. It will then use the data from the radar reflections to calculate an intercept course. And once it's close enough to the enemy aircraft, a proximity fuse will set off the warhead. Now, to use semi-active radar homing missiles, there's a few keys we'll need to find. So let's come up here into our controls. Underneath the weaponry section, you'll want to at keybinds for fire primary and fire secondary weapons, as well as switch primary and switch secondary weapons, allowing you to quickly swap between IR and SAR missiles you have on board. I also recommend keybinding the weapon lock air to air at least. This will allow you to turn your missile on and off. You can use fire secondary weapons to turn it on, but sometimes it can be a little bit finicky. Whereas if you have weapon lock key bound, this will instantly turn it on and it's 100% reliable. I haven't had that fail on me yet. So let's come down here a little bit further and we'll get on to the radar specific controls. Uh, this switch radar IRST search on off, this will turn your radar on or off. It can be used, helpful to turn your radar off in case you want to sneak up on someone uh, and not alert their RWR. Next, we have a keybind here that will switch between the radar and the IRST on an aircraft if it has an IRST system. Currently, this is only useful on the MiG-23M as it's the only aircraft with an IRST you can switch to. Next, we have the Change Radar IRST Mode. If your plane has different radar modes, you will use this to cycle through them. It's so helpful on the British Phantoms, the F4E Kai, the Vigan, and the MiG-23M, as this will cycle between your Pulse Doppler or Look Down modes, as well as your regular search modes. Moving on, we have radar slash IRST beyond slash within visual range combat. Some planes, like pretty much all of the Phantoms, and I'm pretty sure the Vigan also has this, they have an ACM mode, or air combat maneuvers mode. This will boresight the radar and limit it to about six miles, six to nine miles. It'll limit it to a short range. Uh, what this means is that it'll allow you to lock planes that are just straight off your nose. So you can point your plane at an enemy plane and the radar will lock the first target that it sees. And it can be very useful when you're in a turning dogfight. Get your radar locked on them. Next, we have change radar IRST search mode. Next, we have Change Radar IRST Search Mode. This keybind is used to cycle between wider and narrower search patterns. After that, we have Change Radar IRST Scope Scale. This will increase the range at which radar will show targets on it. Next, we have Select Radar IRST Target Lock. If you have multiple enemies on your radar, you can use this to cycle between them to get to the one you want to lock onto. And finally, we have lock radar slash IRST on target. And this is what you use to lock slash unlock a target with your radar. And those are all the keybinds we're going to need. So let's hop on over into a test flight and I will be back with you all once I'm up into the air and ready to explain the UI. 
All right, here we are in the test flight. I've gone ahead and climbed up and gotten ourselves set up and paused the test flight so we can take a look at the UI. We'll go ahead and start over here on the left. This is our RWR. This is what we'll use to see any radars that are currently pinging our aircraft or any radars that are hard locking our aircraft. Right now there's a spa down over here that is currently pinging my aircraft. And it'll just show a little flashing half circle here on the outside of this RWR. If he was locking me there would be a, a dotted line between the center and the outer circles here. Moving on to the middle, we'll start at the top. We have our compass, which can be helpful for calling out targets to any squad mates you're in a voice chat with. Or it can also show, well not or, it, it can also show bearings to targets. Currently, our radar is picking up a target kind of about 293 to 294 from us. It's this F-86 over here. If we come down into the middle of the screen, we will see two bars. These are our search bars to give us an idea of the area we are currently searching in the sky. Now if we come over here to the right, we'll have our main radar display. I currently have my radar display set to a square. Uh, yours might be set to a little pie shaped pizza, slice, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you would like to set it to the square, what you can do is you can come into Options under Air Battle Settings. Uh, this setting right here, Use Rectangular Radar Indicator. If you switch that over to Yes, you will get the square indicator like I have right here. Coming back over to our radar indicator, we have on the top left here uh, the azimuth we are currently scanning. So we're currently scanning uh, 60 degree azimuth with 9 degrees up and down. So you kind of split that 60 in half. So we're kind of searching 30 degrees to the left, 30 degrees to the right, and about 4.5 degrees up and 4.5 degrees down. Coming over here to the middle, we have two things to look at. First, on the left middle here, that is our ground clutter indicator. You can see four bars over here, and only one bar is lit up. So what that means is we have low ground clutter, and we shouldn't really have trouble acquiring a radar lock. The higher that gets, the harder it'll get for you to acquire a radar lock and maintain that lock. Now certain radar settings can help minimize that, as currently you can see over here on the right, I'm currently in the search LD mode, or look down mode, for the MiG-23. And some Phantoms in the Vigan, this would be search PD, and that's for your pulse Doppler, and it'll help filter out uh, ground clutter. We can swap that there with our change radar mode, and as you can see, we've gone over to a just normal search. We press that again, and we're now back to look down mode. Then over here on the right, we have uh, our current scale of the radar. So currently, we're seeing 19 miles on the radar. If we use the change radar scope scale keybind, we can then cycle this through uh, several different range presets, and we can pick the one we want to keep. Usually on the MiG-23, I just leave it at the default 19 miles, as that's plenty for Air RB. Coming down here onto the radar display itself, we'll see a negative 52 degrees and a 52 degrees on the two top-hand corners. And that's just saying that the screen itself is showing a possible 52 degrees to the left and 52 degrees to the right but since we can only search 30 degrees left and 30 degrees right, our radar screen isn't going to fill up this whole square. On other radars, this may be different, but that's how it is for the MiG-23. Now, an important thing here is you see a shaded in green section of the radar. Uh, on other radars, that might be large. It, it can be different sizes and shapes depending on the radar, but 
to lock a target, you want to make sure they are in this shaded, shaded green section. So in a second, we'll pull this F86 over into that and lock him up. So let's go ahead and do that. As you see, you can see we're picking him up there. He's in our shaded green section. So we'll go ahead, lock him up. Let me move over here and we'll pause it. And there's a couple things we'll need to look at now. As you can see, our radar has changed into Instead of a search, we are now in a track section. So we have a good solid track on that with low ground clutter. So we should have we have a solid lock here. Another thing we can look at is these three bars here on the right hand side. These are your range estimation bars. So the middle bar is the target's range from you. The top bar is the maximum range of your missile. And the bottom bar is the minimum range of your missile. So as long as the target is between these two shorter bars, uh, you are in missile range and you can launch. Usually I wait to launch until I'm about three quarters to half of the way for any kind of long range shots. Anything above kind of a three quarters of the space between these two bars and you're running the risk of missing. Uh, so let's go ahead, unpause real quick, we'll bring up an R23, and we now have a new... And we'll now look over here at the center, if I can get it... Well, we're gonna go behind him and then we lock on him. So give me a second, as I circle around him, I get a better lock so I can show off what I wanted to talk about next. Go ahead and radar lock him. Warm up a missile. And here we go. That's what I wanted to do. Now, if we look over here at the square, you can see that we've got the target locked up. Top right here, you see we have our target range to target so he's currently 1.4 miles from us bottom right here we have our closure rate and then a very helpful little uh, indicator here on the bottom is that's indicating the direction the target is traveling from you so right now the target is traveling away and to the right of us as shown there if that uh, little line from the circle was pointed down that would mean the target is coming towards us left he's crossing to the left and to the right he's crossing to the right uh, now the very helpful here with the radar is you have two circles on him you have your inner circle which is just your normal seeker head it's just show this inner circle is just showing that the radar or that the missile seeker head is looking at the target what's really helpful is this outside circle this is showing the quality of the radar lock so uh, if I unpause and I come to the left here you see how it goes away let me see if I can try it, it it's not always red it okay it's not letting me show it too well right now but this outside circle uh, basically lets you know how good of a radar lock you have. It goes clockwise, so the the fuller the circle is, the better the radar lock you have. And as long as you, ha as long as your inner circle, or as long as the circles are red there, you know you've got a decent enough lock to fire. So we come over, bring in centered up. We have a solid lock there, so go ahead and fox one. And boom, aircraft is down. So, with that out of the way, let's head back to the hangar and we'll go over some basic tactics. Before going into a battle, we're going to need some basic tactics to employ and defend against semi active radar homing missiles. To get the most out of it, of a Fox 1, we're going to need to be as high and as fast as possible. The higher you are, the farther the missile will travel. 
This is due to there being less air at higher altitudes, leading to less drag on the missile. Typically, you want to be around 20,000 feet for War Thunder engagements. Since with the size of the map, you're not going to be able to get much higher before you start getting into range of the enemy team. When we launch the missile, the missile will inherit our plane speed. So the faster you are, uh, the more energy the missile will have when you launch it. Typically, you want to be around Mach 0.9 to above supersonic. You, at a minimum, you want to be around Mach 0.9 when launching a missile. Uh, just the more speed you can give the missile before you launch it, the higher speed it'll be able to reach before its booster runs out, which will allow it to fly further and then have more energy at the end of its flight to hit its target. Uh, with these two basic concepts out of the way, let's go ahead and look at a more advanced tactic of what I call the offset and crank. Uh, this will combine two maneuvers that will help you effectively defend against an incoming SAR missile while maintaining a lock on your target and using your own SAR missile to shoot them down. So let me do a fancy dancy switch over to my wonderful drawing here and yes i am definitely an artist nothing wrong here so over here on the left we have you and the blue and over here on the right we have the big bad evil guy we are going to blow out of the sky so we're starting off in a head-on with the enemy and we both launch missiles now after we launch our missile and we see a missile get fired on us or just about after we fire a missile, we want to either turn to the left or to the right. This is offsetting, and we will place the enemy on the edges of our radar. This will then force their missile to turn to acquire an intercept course on our new course. So as we turn off to the left here, the missile is going to have to make a hard right to come out to lead us enough to hit us. And then several second, you want to wait several seconds, so then you, the missile will acquire the lead it needs to hit you, and then you come back to the right. This is the crank. As you crank over, the missile is going to waste most of its energy trying to come around. And As you fly through over here, the missile will fly behind you most of the time, and you're defeating the missile without even having to use countermeasures most of the time. All the while, we're keeping the enemy on our radar screen, and our missile is screaming in, and it'll come over here and blow up the enemy. Now, let's head on back over to War Thunder, and we will switch over, and I'll show some gameplay. Future Rampage here. Sorry, I've realized I talked about how to use the radar and how to employ missiles and tactics to use them, but I never talked about the missiles themselves. So, over here on the MiG-23, let's hop into the secondary weapon screen. And what we're going to want to focus on here is the R-23R. This is the uh, semi-active radar homing missile. And so the important information we're going to want to gleam from this is going to be number one, the maximum G overload. Let me actually click on it this way. Yeah, we want to look at the maximum G overload and launch range. These are going to give us an idea of the capabilities of our missile and how we can employ them. So the R23R has a 15G maximum load, so that means it'll be able to pull 15Gs. If you're used to using IR missiles, you're used to understanding what maximum overload G is, but one thing you're not used to is the extra range you get with the Fox 1s. And now, the 16 and 3 quarter mile is definitely the maximum under optimal conditions. You won't normally be shooting that far. But it gives you an idea of what kind of range the missile will have. As if we go over here to Japan and look at the F4 EJ Kai's missile, it gets a new AIM 7, AIM 7 E2. This one has a 31 mile range, so 
in theory, the AIM-7 should be able to outrange the R-23R, and in practice they do, but it, it not by as much as you would think with these maximum launch ranges. Usually the effective range for a R-23R I found is somewhere between 6 to 8 miles for a long range shot, whereas the AIM-7s you can get between 8 to 12 miles for long range shots. And I've gotten hits with those before. But uh, as well here on the AIM-7E2 we see that it's got a 25G overload so it's definitely at the moment this is the most maneuverable Fox one in the game and it has been very fun to use since patch. So with that out of the way now we can go hop into a game. Okay, here we are with our first clip. I'm in a MiG-23. Went ahead and climbed off to the right side. Got up to 20,000 feet. And now I'm turning in and looking for targets. I've spotted one dot out in the distance. So I'm going to throw my radar into look down search mode and try to pick him up. There he is. Got him in a solid lock 13 miles out. Make sure my wings are swept all the way back. There he is locking me up. I get my missile ready to shoot. And then here we go, Fox 1 at 7 miles. I'm now going to offset to the right. Make sure I place him on the left hand side of my radar. And he's starting to chaff, but I'm going to hold the missile lock there. This chaff doesn't really work too well in War Thunder, so if someone starts chaffing on you, as long as you have fired the missile before they had started chaffing, the missile will generally track and still hit the target. So, as you saw there, I just held the track on the chaff, and we got ourselves a splash. Now let's head on to the next clip. Now here we are in the second clip in the F4E J Kai. Is on the day of the patch. And I just recently got in the AIM 7E2, so I was trying to see how they would work. So again, we're climbing off, getting up to around 20,000 feet, and we're going to be looking for targets off to our left. I start to get a radar lock, so I turn to put it off my nose and see if I can find them with my radar. I find one, but it's not heading in the right direction to be locking me up, so that's not him. Looks like there might have been a missile shot at me, so I'm going to go defensive, try to notch the missile. I'm not sure what exactly is locking me up. Now I see them here, they're two F4Es, so I get the one on the right with ACM lock, I get a Fox 1 off, and then I'm going to offset right, hold the lock. Now I'm cranking back over, because the one on the left shot at me. You see the missile fly right by there. We've got Splash on the guy on the right, now we're merging with the guy on the left. He came into this merge way too fast, so he's going to shoot out in front of me, but I'm not able to get the kill. The teammate came in and cleaned him up. That was a good example there of using an offset and crank maneuver. Well, let's move on to the final clip. Here we are in our third and final clip. Side climbing again in the F4 J Kai. Getting up to around 20,000 feet in that general area. Right now I'm getting locked, so we'll see if you can. I could spot what it was. It looked like that F4E that just got shot down by our FGR2, so got nothing to worry about now. See a target, long range on my radar, so I lock him up, but not too worried about him now. Just looking for other targets that might be more, uh, more opportune. In the meantime, since I'm in no trouble at the moment, I'm answering some questions about the fuel bug we were getting on the first day of the patch. But once I finish up answering this, I'm looking for any targets that might be 
nice and opportune. Here I see that Jaguar is coming around again, so I'm going to get them locked up with my radar. Using the ACM mode, and thanks to the pulse Doppler on the F4 EJ Kai, I'll have no trouble hitting him even though he's against ground clutter there. So there's Splash 1 with the AIM-7. As I pull up, I see this big in here chasing my FG-1. So I'm going to try to help the FG-1. Quick check of my 6, make sure no one's going to shoot me. As I look around, the FG-1's turning towards me. So we get some lead on him, then Fox-1 and head on and Splash-2. These AIM-7E2s are deadly in the head-on. Looks like that F-80 might possibly be coming for me, so I'm going to extend until he turns off me and heads for that fur ball. So I'm going to come around, see if I can pick up that F-8U2 that seemed to be coming this direction. Try to use ACM mode, because he should have been in range. But here he comes, he pops up off here to the right. I try for a shot here, but I'm going to lose him due to him notching my radar. But as I come behind him, I'll be able to get a good lock here. Let's watch this AIM-7 go. This puppy pulls big time lead to get him. Splash 3, box 1. Try to get a shot on this F-80, but he notches me, and then I derp this gunshot. I don't know what I was aiming at there, but I obviously wasn't aiming at the plane. This F-80 doesn't turn into me, so I'm going to come around and see if I can get another shot up on him. It's in the ACM mode to find him, get a radar lock, but he dives below mountains, so my missile runs into the mountain trying to pull me. This time I don't derp the shot, but Returning instead of derping that shot, I'll derp this one. As you saw there, my friendly's name faded behind the MiG's name, so I thought the MiG was behind him. So I tried to save him, and instead I ended up killing him. Always check to make sure you have no friendlies between you and an enemy you're trying to shoot at. Because the missile will always go for the friendly, and then you'll look like a bad person. But, that's it for this clip. This is the final clip of the video, so... If you have any questions on things I didn't cover, throw them down in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, thanks for watching.